When using the Action Network as an organization, coalition, or a campaign, you'll want to organize yourself as a group. Groups let your organization have a branded presence on Action Network, publish actions, and build an organizational email list. It's also another way that Action Network makes it easy for you to work together with people in your organization. You can have multiple members of your team, all with their own individual accounts, working together in your group. All of your group members should be people who you want to be able to create actions with your brand. That may be staff or volunteers, but generally it's not just a bunch of your supporters. Your supporters live on your list, but not as administrators or organizers in your group. So let's start with creating a new group. We'll go to the Start Organizing menu, and under Actions, click Groups. This will bring us to our Create a Group page. Now, we'll give our group a name. Like all our actions, there's an official name here, which, will, which all your activists and the public will see. But above that, here, is an administrative title. Only your organizers will be able to see this, not the public. It's here to make running your group a little easier, especially if you're managing multiple organizations. Since I'm creating this group for a demo, I'm going to indicate that in the administrative title. Next, we have the option to set up a location or where our organization is based out of. So we'll put our zip or postal code in here. Then we have the option to add a banner image or logo to add some branding to our page. We'll give you some size guidelines to help you choose which photo will look best. You'll just click Choose File, select an image, click OK, and you'll see the image when you preview or publish the page. Next, we add our group description. Usually, this is just a quick description of the organization, the mission statement, something like that. So we'll type in a quick description here. Like all our actions, you have the formatting toolbar right up here at the top of the description box. This is the same toolbar that's going to be present on all of your actions. You can write it in HTML, format headings, change your alignment to left, center, or justify, Bold, italicized, or strike through your text. Add bulleted or number lists. Add an image. Add a video. Add a table, link, or horizontal line. Use these formatting options to customize the appearance of your group's page. Under the description box, you may see a drop-down menu somewhere around here, which asks you to choose a partner group. If you're using, if you're a partner using the Action Network with our network feature. Check out our Networks video tutorial at health.actionnetwork.org for more information about this and our other Networks features. The rest of this page really shows off the Action Network one-to-one -one interface. This means that once your page goes live, it will look exactly like this. Once you create campaigns and actions, they'll show up here at the bottom of your page. This way, the public will be able to see what actions your organization has done, like letter campaigns, petitions, events, and more. Note that, the, that only published actions will be displayed here. And over here, up to the right, you'll see this Join This Group box. By clicking the blue Apply to Join button, someone can ask to join your group. It's important to note that it's hard for the general public to find your group page. They'd have to go down to the bottom of an action that you've created and click on your group name. The only way they'll really find this page is if they're specifically searching for it. So random people won't be applying to join your group. It's used for people within your organization who need to gain access in order to, to create, edit, or manage an action. But if you do happen to get an application from someone who is a supporter but not in your organization, you'll be able to send them a message to engage in other ways. You can also turn off this option to apply to join by going to the Settings tab on your Group Manage page. We'll go there in just a minute. Once you're done here, you can save and preview the group, save it as a draft, or save and publish. We'll go ahead and click the save, the red Save and Publish button. Once you publish, you'll be prompted to set this group as your Action Network homepage. 
If you click the blue Yes button, when you log into Action Network, you'll see this group page automatically, rather than the dashboard of your individual account. And if you say yes, any action you create will, sponsor, will be sponsored by this group by default. But you can change this for individual actions as needed. For now, I'll go ahead and say no thank you. Now, you're on your group manage page. You can access this page on your dashboard where you'll see a list of all the groups. You'll just click on the manage button and it will take you here to your group manage page. Here at the top, you'll see my administrative title and below that, my public title and italics. Also, note the URL. It's my public title, not the administrative title. This URL is set once you publish and is based on your group name. Below the title, you'll also see these three options, view group, edit group, and unpublish group. View group will take you to a new tab to see your live page. Edit group will take you back to your create a group page. and unpublish the group will put your group back into draft mode. Note that unpublishing your group won't delete it or any of your data, but your page will not be live and you won't be able to create any new actions under that group. This group manage page is where you can see everything that is going on with your group, but we don't have any data in this new group yet. So let's jump over to my other group. We'll go back to the dashboard and click to manage one of my other groups. So the first thing that we'll want to do is add team members to our group. You can do that here in the invitations tab. You'll see there, there are three sections, one to send invitations, one with pending invites, and one with pending applications. In order to add team members to our group, we'll send them an invitation to become an organizer. You just type in their email address here click to send the invitation, and they'll receive an email notifying them that they've been added to your group as an organizer. Let's pause here to discuss the roles of your group members. People in your group can either be administrators or organizers. Admins have access to the work of the full group. They have access to the full list and can send emails to the full list. You can limit an admin's individual access so they can't send emails or can only pull reports. We'll look at how to do that in just a second. You can also have people in your group that are organizers. Organizers can create actions with the group's branding, but all of the data will flow up to the full group list and go on their individual list. But organizers only have access to the data that they themselves bring into the list, not the full group list. So rather than sending emails to the whole group list, organizers can only send and access the data for the people that RSVP to their events or sign their own petition. This is great for field organizers or other regional staff who you want to be able to organize around your organization's issues and create certain actions, but not necessarily be in charge of communications with your entire list. So once you send whatever invitations you want, let's tab over to the Organizers tab. This page shows you everyone that's working on the group right now. It's just me. At the admin level, you can use this green button to edit the permissions of someone, like I mentioned earlier. You can uncheck the boxes as needed or remove particular petitions from someone. You can change whether people can edit the settings, send or target an email, pull a report, search and add activists, work with contributions or donations. When you're done here, just click the blue Save Permissions button. Back in the list here, you can also use this blue Revert to Organizer button to move someone from an admin back to an organizer. If someone is an organizer, there's a similar button that will show up here that lets you promote them to an admin. If you wish to remove a user from the group entirely, use this red Remove User button. You can also email someone directly from this page by clicking the small mail icon next to the red button here. Now that we have all the people in our group set, let's look at what else you can do from the Group Manage page. The first tab is Statistics. Here, you'll see the size of your list over time. Under the graph, we'll give you raw numbers for your list. We'll show you the size of your list, the number of new activists, 
in the past week, the number of actions taken in the past week, and the number of people that have unsubscribed from your list in the past week. Below that, you'll also see fundraising statistics. We'll show you the total amount that you've raised, your total number of donations, your active recurring donations, and a projection of what you'll raise this month based on current, one-time, and recurring donations. The next tab is for actions. Here, you'll see all the actions that you've created in your group. They'll be identified by the type of action, like a form, event, or event campaign, and also who created the form, whether that's you or someone else in your group. You'll also be able to see the number of people who have taken action, if your action is published, and you'll also see this blue Manage page if the action is published, and it will be read and say Draft Form if it's in draft. These buttons will take you to the Action Manage page. You'll also see this gray Duplicate button, which will create a copy of the action that you can edit and publish. This is good for things like recurring meetings, because all you have to do is update the date and time. You'll also see on your right the Create a Sponsored Action menu. You can use these buttons here to create a new action that's sponsored by your group. You can always create actions from the Start Organizing menu, and add your group as a sponsor, but it's a good idea to get in the habit of creating your actions from here, so you never miss a step and your agenda is always sent to your group. The next tab is Emails and Reports. Here, you'll see a list of all the emails that you've sent and that are still in draft mode. Like the Actions tab, you have the option to manage or edit the email, view statistics, and duplicate the email. When you click on the green stats button, you'll get an at-a-glance view of the email statistics. You can download the statistics as a PDF or a CSV by clicking the green download email stats button. Below that, you'll see this report section. Here, you'll see the reports that you've created. You have the option to duplicate, edit the report parameters, or view the results again. This next tab is for discussion. This is a discussion board, and it's an internal board for administrators and organizers to plan or to make comments. Unlike discussion boards on events, this discussion board is private, so only you, administrators, and organizers of the group will be able to see it. The next tab is organizers and invitations, which we've already seen. The last tab that everyone will see is settings. Here, you have two checkboxes. This one will let people apply to be an organizer, like we talked about in the Create a Group page. If you turn this off, the only way that someone can become an organizer is if an administrator sends them an invitation on the Invitations tab. The other checkbox gives you a notification whenever a group sends out a mass email. Under that, you'll see an email settings piece. When you create a new email, you'll be prompted to put in the sender's name and a reply to address. If you have a sender and a reply to address that you want to use for all your mass emails, you can put that in here and we'll add it as your default in every email. You can also add a standard sign-off here that will appear at the bottom of your emails. But again, you can change this when you create an email if you need to. Next, you'll see a recurring donation receipt emails. This is the email that will your recurring donors will automatically receive every time their donations go through. You can customize it by adding an email wrapper, a different subject, sender, or reply to address, as well as the text and clips in the email. You also have the option to give your donors the ability to cancel their recurring donations through a link in the email. Just check this box here if you don't want that link to appear. Below that, you'll see another email you can customize, the failed charge emails. Donors will automatically receive this email if their recurring donation has failed to process. Again, you can customize this with an email wrapper, changing the subject, the sender, the reply to address, as well as the body of the email. As with the recurring donation receipt, you can save and test the email by clicking this green button here. Now that you've seen the basics of creating a group, if you have any more questions about groups or other features, please visit help.actionnetwork.org.